Oh, hello there. I just jumped into bed um, in my after show, but I'm not in my bedroom. I'm in an airplane in the air headed to Dubai. Yeah, so Etihad is sick and they gave me the residence, which is the biggest seat on the plane. Um, and Justin and I, who is behind the camera right now, hi Justin, <laughs> um, got to enjoy the suite. And one of the perks is a bed. And I'm gonna show you guys everything that's happening. It's the same chef that I had two years ago. I'm back on Etihad. And um, I'm not just staying in the apartments this time like I did two years ago when I went to the Philippines. I'm actually staying in the residence. And um, I think this is my chef. Hi. <laughs> it's cozy, but it's wide. Hi. Welcome aboard. Hi. How are you today? Fantastic. My name is Daniel. I'm gonna be your builder to today. Okay. The space you are located right now is the what we call the living room. I would highly recommend you to try our massage. Does this go into a bed? It doesn't. No. For your private bed, we have inside the room. <laughs> Question. Yes. Can we have? dinner but breakfast in bed certainly okay yes. we're gonna want that <laughs> this is the exact same size as our bathroom at home <laughs> there's a shower see you later I'm gonna take a shower on the plane it's fancy schmancy products yes. this is like a whole other room it's like yes. you just oh I just turned on the water. Ooh, I thought it was the bidet or something. It's okay. <laughs> I can't go back. You don't know what going back even We're looks gonna like. We're going to have to walk everywhere after this. <laughs> because after you've flown this way, that's it. That's it. I also just wanted to say this is the last after show of season one. And I can't believe it. Honestly, you guys, I can't believe that we are almost to the season finale a pretty big deal which is coming out on tuesday of next week and you guys are just so great i love talking to you through the anchor app i love talking to you through instagram and twitter i feel like you know we have some good conversations and we're gonna have some more good conversations because we are doing season two and it's gonna be bigger and badder and we're gonna talk about even deeper things so get ready because i'm flying high right now but you never know where you're gonna be with me in season two all right so let's get to these anchor questions all right so nikki's first hey ashley this is nikki i'm from sacramento california i was listening to your podcast not too long ago and you mentioned uh, women can have it all and that you're looking forward to having a family one day and that you can have it all. And I really like that quote and it's been really sticking with me these past few days after listening to that podcast. And I noticed that I'm stressing out about everything that's going on. Um, I definitely wanna have a family sometime, but I'm just wondering how I can juggle it all. I am a model. I also have a day job. I'm going to school. I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, I'm engaged. I just don't know how to balance all my entire <laughs> things that I do and then also bring a baby into this world. Any advice would help so much. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Bye. Okay, Nikki. So first of all, I'm not a mom, so I don't know what that whole dynamic of bringing a child into the world is like, because from what I hear is it changes everything. It flips your schedule upside down, your body upside down, and your world upside down. Um, but from the women that I have spoken to that feel like they have it all, they do have it all because they are um, delegating their priorities. They're not doing everything at the same time. And part of me feels like you're doing everything right now because if you don't do it right now, you're going to miss out in life. Um, so maybe you should just get your priorities straight. And maybe it's not as much about like doing everything right now because you feel like now is the opportunity, but maybe it's more about what are your priorities? What do you want to get done? What are your goals in life? And then start to implement other things that, that you want to do or that make you happy and that you have time for Because one of the biggest things that I've learned in 2018 is that self-care is very important, especially for myself. If I don't take the time to meditate or 
pray or have that quiet time with God in the morning, it's going to mess up my day, my month, my year. So make sure that you take time for yourself. And with everything that you just rattled off, I don't know where you find the Nikki time. So make sure you're doing that for yourself. Now we got Ray. Hi, Ashley. My name is Ray and I'm from Kansas City. I was looking for some advice and thought your experience might make you a good person to reach out to for this. So I am white, I'm a Christian, and I'm from Russia. My boyfriend is black, he's Muslim, and he's from Africa. So we're interracial, interreligious, intercultural, we have a lot of differences. And we think that that makes us stronger, we love the things that are different about us. Um, we think that's a great resource that we have, but our families aren't quite on the same page with that, especially with the religion issue. Um, so we are currently trying to figure out how to balance our devotion to one another as a couple and our commitment that we've made with our parents and our respect that we have for them and what they think. Not letting that stop our relationship, trying to figure out how to, how to balance those two things. So I was hoping for some advice. Thank you. Love the podcast. Ray, that is deep. That's like deep, deep. Um, okay, so it's racial, it's religious, and it's cultural differences. You know, the thing is, when I met Justin, we met each other in church, and um, we immediately knew our backgrounds, and where we came from, and what we were walking into when it came to communication, when it came to love, when it came to praying for each other, and, and understanding what our prayer life was like, and there was just an understanding that made it easier, even though culturally we came from different backgrounds. So I can't imagine walking into a relationship like yours, where you've got everything kind of fighting against you, and then on top of it, the family, because that is so true. When you get into a relationship, and you marry that person, you are also marrying the family. You want to make sure that everybody has their opinion heard, but you don't want to change who you are for your family necessarily because sometimes they want to pick the, your person for you and they don't get to. You are the one who gets to choose. All right, let's move on to the next. Stop. It's Eleanor with an A. Okay, here's Eleanor with an A. Hi Ashley, hi Darcy, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Last week you talked about the fact that your moms try to never show and share the body insecurities in front of you as kid. Um, my mom did a lot, she told me a lot of things of on my appearance and I kind of felt that the thinner I will be, the more loved I will be from her and the prettier I will feel. Um, I think that it's still a something I believe in consciously and um, I kind of want to know if you have any advices to break that mindset. I'm getting my it soon and I have the impression that if I don't feel thin on the day I won't fully enjoy it and if I don't look thin on the pictures I won't want to look at them. Um, I love your podcast, I love what you're doing and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Eleanor, hi baby girl. First of all, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that as a kid. That is not something that I wish upon any young adult or child. Um, but if I could share my mama with you, I would. I also have to say that it's not about self-image. It's about self-love. And if you're trying to look at an image and fall in love with that photo, like how you're talking about um, when you look at your wedding photo and, and you're not going to be satisfied with what that is in the next 20 years, then again, you're just trying to fall in love with an image and really you should be falling in love with yourself. So there's definitely some inner work that you're going to have to do, but you're on the right track and you're on the right road to, um, to a whole new understanding of who you are. And it's not about this photo. It's not about, um, who you perceive yourself to be when you look in the mirror. It's really about that girl inside. Thank you for all your anchor questions. I appreciate you guys chiming in and leaving me those, those just warm my heart. Uh, so now let's go into a few of the Instagram and Twitters. And if only I had my Darcy Linda with me to read me the questions, but I do have my lovey dovey husband. So could you read these questions for me? By all means. All right. Number one. Number one, <clears throat> will there be a season two? 
Heck, yes, there's going to be a season two. Why wouldn't there be a season two? Okay, let's just face it. I have had so much fun doing pretty big deal. I've had fun interviewing the guests. I've had fun talking to you guys. So yes, I am coming back with season two and it's going to be even bigger, if you can imagine, than season one. Okay, number two, Justin. What's number two? Number two, are you excited for Miss Universe? Oh, <laughs> funny you should ask that. I'm actually on my way to Miss Universe currently. Um, this plane, this bed, that I'm laying in, or that I'm sitting in right now, is going to Dubai, and then Dubai to Bangkok. I've got one day off, and then I go into press, and then dress rehearsals, and then next thing you know, I will be live on Fox for Miss Universe, so make sure you chime in, guys. All right, what's next? How do you learn to trust new guys you're dating when your ex cheated on you? Well, okay. So, it's hard, because... It's hard not to take baggage in from your past relationship into your new relationship. And I definitely did that with Justin. And, you know, it was it was a struggle, I think, for both of us because he saw that there was a piece of me that was broken and wanted to be able to fix it, but knew that he wasn't the one that could fix it. I was the only one that could fix it. Um, so I think that going into a new relationship, especially when you're having when having had been cheated on, um, you have to remember that not all men are created equal and that there are some really great ones out there. Something that I always told him, because he always wanted to get to know me a little bit more than what I was willing to open up to. And I said, if I know you in six months, I'll tell you. And he always kind of looked at me weird and he was like, okay. And it gave him, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, Justin, but it kind of gave you this um desire to just to get to know me even more yeah and so it was like i gave him a little bit and then i was like but if i know you in six months i'll tell you the whole story and sure enough he got all the tea all the tea what is your dream right now i gotta be honest my dream right now is with justin on a beach holding a drink wearing a teeny tiny bikini Roasting my skin in the sun and sleeping. It's coming soon. What's next, babe? What's the number one thing that links you to all of your guests on the podcast? I have to say, doing season one was so cool. Between having Kim be my first interview, Amy Schumer, Gabrielle Union, Nortagari, Halima, um, Lindsay, just his last interview, Lily. The thing that I liked most about all these women is that they were strong, they were powerful, they were business women, they had a different perspective on life than I had experienced, and I was able to uh, ask questions, get another, have another point of view. And I like to be able to learn from other people. I like to be able to hear the other side of something. And that's what I really wanted for this podcast, for it to be that you were a fly on the wall for a conversation that maybe you wanted to have with someone, but just didn't know how to spark it. And I think that all the women that I had in season one, they established who they were in their own world and, uh, and they owned it. So, you know, season two is going to be badass. And who knows, maybe I'll interview some guys, but we chicks, we kind of rule, kind of rock. All right, guys. So that's it. That's the last one. That's the last freaking after show. I can't believe it. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sending in all your questions into Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for sending in your voice messages to Anchor. I wouldn't be here without you. I want to make sure that we're continuing to talk about things that you want to talk about, that you want to hear about. So make sure you list those things on Instagram and Twitter and let's just keep having conversations and I'll see you guys in season two. But don't forget to subscribe because next week is a season finale of Pretty Big Deal and you are not going to want to miss that. Remember, you are bold, you are brilliant, you are beautiful, and I love you. Sayonara.